Section 7.1 is an introduction to confidence intervals. So the first thing that we are going to talk about is the concept of a point estimate. And to discuss a point estimate, first let's discuss a really important thing that we talked about in the past, which is the concept of a parameter. And if you remember, parameter begins with P, and parameter describes a population. Also, we refer to a statistic as something that describes a sample. Sample begins with an S, statistic begins with an S. So what ends up happening is we end up having this single point estimate, which for us is usually some sort of sample, and we want to use it to, to predict something about a population value. Um, and when we pick this single point estimate, our goal is that it is an unbiased estimator, meaning that it's not always under or over exaggerating the population value. And also, whenever we do use a single point to try to predict some sort of population value, remember the larger the sample size we use, the closer we are to the population parameter. So as we mentioned earlier, just using a single point value to estimate a population can be very limiting. So it's kind of restrictive because just using one number to guess something about a population often doesn't give us the freedom that we need. So instead, we use something called a confidence interval, which is defined as a range, specifically an interval of values, used to estimate the true value of a population parameter. So let's go ahead and look at this specific population right here. So imagine I have four friends who are age 20, 21, 22, and 25. So the average of their ages is 22, and the standard deviation of their ages is 1.87 years. Remember, we considered this a population, so when I found the standard deviation, I did a population standard deviation. Now let's say for some reason, I could only take a sample of size three of my friends. There's lots of samples of size three, but I went ahead and just listed a couple of them here even though there's a lot more that we could list. This is just a subset of the samples. So in the first grouping, I had a sample average age of 21. The next grouping, the sample average age was 22, et cetera. So imagine that we just look at the point estimates. So if I was to take these sample averages and plot them over here on the table, then first I would plot 21, and so I just put a dot above the 21. When I go to plot the 22 next, for some reasons you're gonna see in a minute, I'm gonna use the row above that row to plot my 22. I'm gonna go one row higher to plot 22.33, and one row higher to plot the last sample average of 22.67. Now the thing to remember with this is that the average we were looking for was 22, and as you can see, only one of our numbers, one of our samples, actually had the true population value of 22. That's why we were saying these samples are kind of limiting. So let's copy all of these orange dots over to my interval box. And now what I want to do is put some sort of interval or range around those numbers. So to make life easier, I'm going to take each of these sample averages and I'm going to do a range where I'm just going to add and subtract 1. So if you take 20 and go down by 1 and up by 1, we're going to go from 20 to 22. If I take 22 and go down by 1 and up by 1, 21 to 23. And I'm just going to continue that for the next two. And 
And so I now have four confidence intervals or four ranges around my single point estimate. And so now what I want to do is take these ranges and put them as intervals around all of the points that I just found. So taking the first one from 20 to 21, I'm sorry, 20 to 22, then I'm going to come over here to 22 across and, well, we got cut off. My next range from 21 to 23 is going to look about like that. Let's clean all this up. Putting a range around the next set of numbers, which again goes off my graph or chart, and the last one. So going back to the fact that the population average is 22. Usually you don't know the population average, but I wanted to pick one where we knew it for the point of this example. Then all four of my ranges include the number 22. If you notice, the number 22 is inside each of these ranges. So what we just found out is the single point estimate didn't contain the true population mean every single time. In our example, it only happened once. But the minute we put some sort of interval around each of those sample averages that we got, then what we found is we should be including the mean.